I think I'm as a representative of Bank Negara Malaysia will disclose to you the implementation of monetary policy in order to combat with the COVID-19 crisis. Do you all agree? Yes, yes we, we agree. agree. What is Bank Negara Malaysia and why it is so important to its economy? So basically, Bank Negara Malaysia provides a significant assistance and support to our economy. Bank Negara Malaysia plays an important role in maintaining order by issuing currency and managing reserve to protect the value of the currency, resulting in a more stable monetary condition and a sound financial structure. Let's say in the event of an economic crisis in Malaysia, therefore, the BNM act as a major regulator providing solution such as monetary policy. Monetary policy can help to keep the general level of goods and services prices rising at a low and predictable rate while also promoting economic development. There are several significant impacts of COVID-19 towards Malaysia's economics such as rising in an employment rate or high inflation rate that causing chaos towards the public and lastly, a lower gross domestic profit. The mere effect of COVID-19 is a lower GDP. This can be seen in the graph above where GDP rate falls indicating onset of a recession which may result in layoff unemployment and declining businesses revenue and consumer spending in Malaysia. Reduced GDP indicates a slow growth in a contracting national economy implying that the economy is struggling and in a poor shape. COVID-19 has the potential to devastate the economy by increasing the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate is rapidly increasing particularly during the COVID-19 period. This can be interpreted as the economic operating at a less than full capacity, resulting in inefficiency and a lower output and income of for the economy. Meanwhile, in terms of an inflation, people show their worries about the percentage of inflation that has risen up to the highest level ever recorded. The inflation outlook remains vulnerable to the global community price development. Thus, inflation raises prices and reduces purchasing power. If your purchasing power falls, therefore your money may become less valuable. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Hazra Binti Sharifuddin. Next tool is a moral persuasion. Moral persuasion is one of the monetary tools where it is a strategy used by the central bank to persuade or convince the commercial bank to extend credit in conformity with its directive and in the best interest of the national economy. Moral persuasion is used particularly when quantitative and other chosen tactic methods show to be less successful. The objective of this tool is an effort to persuade commercial bank to follow or voluntarily act to the central bank instruction regarding money and credit matter in the overall economic interest of the nation. The characteristic of the moral persuasion is the central bank has the power to demand or persuade the commercial bank to refrain from providing extra credit to the general population or funding non property industry sector. This approach involves the central bank writing letter or meeting with commercial bank. Moral persuasion is a milder approach of selective credit control than other types, since it doesn't include any administration trick or disciplinary action. Current issue that can be seen using this tool is when Bank Negara Malaysia announced a moratorium on March 24, 2020. Bank Negara Malaysia imposed a six-month automatic moratorium on all bank loans, with the exception of credit card balance for people affected by the COVID-19. Because of this announcement, Bank Negara Malaysia has automatically persuaded to all commercial banks in Malaysia. On April 1, 2020, banking institutions have to automatically impose a six-month embargo on all loans. The persuasion of this policy from central bank is to help individuals and SME who are affected with the COVID-19 with to unemployment because of the restriction of MCO. During this time, many people cannot work and SME cannot be operated due to eliminate COVID-19 chain. 
many indebted are unable to repay their loan due to their inability in income. By using this tool, Central Bank want to make sure that the financial intermediation rule of the financial sector remain intact. Access to finance continue to be available, and banking institutions stay focused on supporting the economy during the exceptional situation. Each commercial bank to action to help and reduce the burden of their customer and support Malaysian economy with moratorium policy pursued by Bank Negara Malaysia. So next, I will talk about bank rates and discount rates. The bank and discount rates at which country central bank lend money to domestic banks, typically in the form of loan with extremely short term, is referred to as the bank rates. One of the ways that central bank can influence economic activity is through the management of the interest rates. To rein in the economy and bring it back under control, higher bank rates can be used, while lower rates can be used to encourage economic growth by lowering borrowing costs for borrowers. The interest rate charged by bank is typically referred to as the discount rate. The Bank of National Malaysia is responsible for determining both the discount rates and the reserve requirement for Malaysian financial institution. In order to control the amount of money in circulation, the authority will buy or sell treasury security. The discount rate, the value of treasury bonds and reserve requirement alone have a significant influence on their economy on their own but together they exert an even greater influence. Monetary policy is simply the term given to administration of the monetary system in this manner. Next, for characteristic and objective bank rate and discount rates. First, when the bank needs finance, not only do they lend money to consumer, but the bank itself will also borrow money. The bank can also borrow money from one of the, these two different sources. It has access to the bank, central bank as well as the money markets where it can borrow from other banks. They are obligated to make interest payment in the both location. Bank rates and discount rate refer to as the interest rate charged by the central bank and other banks. If the government decides that it must reduce the expansion of the money supply in order to bring inflation under control, the central bank will raise both the bank rates and discount rates in order to persuade financial institutions to reduce the amount of money that they lend to consumers. On the other hand, the reverse is also true. If the government wants to stimulate a rise in the money supply to reduce unemployment and the likelihood of the recession, it will in turn reduce the bank rates and the discount rates. This will make it cheaper for banks to borrow money from the interbank money market or from the central bank. Furthermore, for implemented discount rate in monetary policy, Throughout the issue, it was shown that a few monetary policy had been added to the financial system to solve this problem. These monetary policy are meant to control the flow of the money on the market to keep the economy going for good of the country and its people. This quantitative monetary policy is put into place by Bank Negara Malaysia, which lowered the overnight policy rates by 50 basis points in January and March, bringing it down to the 2.50% on May 5, 2020. The OPR value will drop by another 50 percent point, bring it down to 2%, the lowest level since 2010. The OPR, like, like the interest rate that the Bank Negara Malaysia charged the commercial bank for loans. When the discount rates or bank rates go down, it will be cheaper to borrow money from Bank Negara Malaysia. This will make more people want to borrow money from commercial bank as the cost of borrowing goes down for commercial banks. The cost of borrowing for consumer will also go down in a change reaction. The statutory reserve requirement, often known as the SRR, is a measure that can be used to manage liquidity. It is frequently referred to by its full name, the statutory reserve requirement. In order to maintain compliance with the statutory reserve requirement, SRR, financial institutions are required to maintain balance in their statutory reserve accounts, SRA, that are equivalent to a specific proportion of their eligible liabilities, EL. This proportion is what determines the SRR rate. This mandate is referred to as the statutory reserve requirement, which is SRR for short. It is important to raise the SRR in order to control the significant accumulation of liquidity which may lead to financial imbalance and pose hazard for the stability of the financial system. 
This can be done in order to manage the risk associated with the accumulation of liquidity. On the other hand, the bank may decide to lower the SRR if they believe it is necessary to facilitate the transmission of monetary policy rates to retail rates. This would be the case if they deem it necessary to do so. Given that the OPR is the only indicator that truly really matters, it is significant that it be emphasized that adjustment to the SRR should not be constructed as a signal on the stance of monetary policy. It is necessary to stress this point. Next, for the current issue, it stated that Bank Negara not expected to raise SRR ratio. Their overnight policy rate, OPR, was raised by Bank Negara Malaysia to a new level of 2.25%, representing an increase of 25 basis points. Both the OPR corridor ceiling and floor rates have been raised to 2.50% and 2% respectively, to reflect the rise in the OPR corridor ceiling rate. Continued support for the development of economic activity is coming from the reopening of the economy on a global scale as well as the improvement in condition on the labour market. On the other hand, the impact of rising cost pressures, the military situation in Ukraine and intensive containment measure in China have partially cancelled out the positive effects of these factors. Despite some signs of improvement in condition along the global supply chain, inflationary pressures have been steadily mounting for the most part as a result of rising commodity costs as well as robust demand condition. As a direct result of this, they anticipate that the world's central banks will continue to make adjustments to the parameters of their monetary policy, with some moving at a more rapid pace than others. It is anticipated that the rate of global growth will decelerate going forward and this rate will continue to be influenced by factors such as the heightened cost pressure, the conflict in Ukraine and the circumstances of the global supply chain and the volatility of financial markets. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is No Isfiti bin Abdul Rahman. Now, I would like to present about the impact of monetary policy. Firstly, the impact on economy gone because firms are more willing to invest in capital equipment to boost productivity and economy growth when unemployment is low. The objective of steady equipment growth is solely tied to the goal of high employment. In contrast, if employment is high and factories high either, it does not make sense for a company to invest in new facilities and equipment. As a result of the passage of the statutory is ratio, a rise in the money supply support aggregate every detail and aggregate demand, which stimulate the economy and reduce unemployment. Secondly, the impact on high employment and output stability, many people will suffer as a result of rising unemployment. When unemployment is high, the economy has hidden labor as well as hidden resources that has closed factories and adduced equipment, resulting in producting loss, lower GDP. As a result, when the liquidity ratio is present, monetary policy increases and it is suitable to reduce unemployment and recession or to reach full unemployment. Thirdly, the impact on interest rate stability. Fluctuation in interest rate, for example, which impact customer propensity to buy houses, make it more difficult for customers to sell at winter to buy a house and for construction businesses to plan how many houses to build. A central bank may also wish to limit interest rate increases. As a result, with the bank rate and the discount rate, the central bank and other bank interest rate half refer to as the interest rate, rate and the discount rate respectively. Lastly, impact on stability on financial market. Financial crisis can impact financial market capacity to rotate cash to person with productive investment possibility, resulting in a significant decline in economic activity. A central bank primary purpose is to promote a more stable 
financial system in order to have financial cases. Thus, selective credit control is a selective measure used to influence credit to certain type of sector loan. These are among the most effective measures available to BNM to regulate credit volume and direction. That's all for me. Thank you. As a conclusion, based on the topic and the issue that has been discussed by my fellow presenter, taking into account the economic situation growth and inflation for 2022, BNM stated that the current monetary policy is still appropriate and will continue to be accommodating in order to support recovery and thus ensure price stability. The global economy is still on man. On a positive note, the overall recovery path remains under control. The risks associated with COVID-19 also have an impact on the global growth outlook. In order to contain inflationary pressures caused by the ringgit depression, it is very critical to maintain a very tight monetary policy. Furthermore, this policy is typically intended to strengthen the foundation for the prospect of a long-term sustainable growth. This policy carried out on behalf of the government by the central bank.